So you join us here on day one of Smart Factory Expo. I'm delighted to say we're joined by Mark Hughes of Epicor. Mark, thank you very much for joining us at the manufacturer. Uh, first of all, can you just explain to us what you're hoping to get out of this event this year? Yeah, no, well, first of all, delighted to be here. You know, um, we've been a long-term partner with the manufacturer. We've attended this event many years. We've missed being here for the last two. And um, I was a bit worried there weren't going to be many people, but I'm delighted to see how busy it is. I'm looking around. We're meeting old friends. We're meeting new prospects and everything else. But why are we here? We're here because Epicor have been synonymous with UK manufacturing for many years. We provide software solutions for manufacturers. And actually, what I wanted to do this year, very different to previous years, was to bring a number of our customer products. So these things you see around us on the stand are all products made by our customers using our software. And I really wanted to showcase the best in British manufacturing. Because I think what the last couple of years have taught all of us is that you know economies are based around manufacturing they're not based around service industries and manufacturing is going to be at the core of the recovery and everything else that's going on so for me it's about being here and of course promoting our own product but it's also about promoting our customers and what they can do in the uk as well so that's why we're here thank you mark great stuff i uh, if i could just pick your brains a little bit first of all with a question um can you explain to us what human-centric industry 5.0 actually is? Oh, certainly can, yeah. No, so uh, I think, again, when I look at manufacturing in the UK, and we, we can talk all about industrial revolutions and industry 4.0 and all of those kind of things, but what I'm really excited about is suddenly we are realising that all of the automation, all the technology and everything else is great, but people are what we're really good at. And actually, you look at you know you look at manufacturing in the UK, whether that be you know new 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 ways of tapping onto water pipes, whether that be you know gas connectors, whether that be you know sheet metal fabrication, that's all been designed by somebody. And, and what we're really good at in the UK is that low volume, high value, either manufacturing you know small batches or the prototyping, the design, the IP, and all of those kind of things. That comes from people. Now, what we've been really bad at in the UK for so many years is being able to do that in a cost-effective way to compete with other places. But that's changing. Suddenly, everywhere else is becoming as expensive as we are. So our competitive advantage in terms of those people is coming back. So for me, Industry 5.0 is taking the best of the tech that's out there and combining it with people. And that really excites me because that is what we do so well in the UK, it's the people. And I look around at the, at the intellectual capability in this room and, and, and you know the people here and some of the tech and I'm really excited by it. But it's those two things coming together are really going to give us competitive advantage in the world going forward. Fantastic. Uh, why has continuous improvement been necessary in this? What, what's made it possible, do you think? Well, I, I think we're, uh, there's all sorts of buzzwords and I try and avoid the buzzwords, but we are at a point of inflection, I think, where so many things have come together. Continuous improvement, all of our manufacturers around the world have had to continuously improve and evolve their products and technology has evolved as well. And I think one of the big things that's changed over the last couple of years is cloud. So again, you know, we talk about cloud solutions and things being up in the cloud. I never thought I'd see UK manufacturers adopting the cloud like they have. They're used to having machine tools, they're used to having equipment. Having a server in the corner of a room is, is what they do. But actually what the I don't even want to talk about the pandemic, but what that has done in some ways is to accelerate change. And actually, you know, we've got traditional manufacturers that I thought would never allow uh, their employees to go and work from home. And actually, they've embraced that. They've sent them all off to work from home and then suddenly realized they've got no IT staff in the business. They've got none of these things. So suddenly cloud solutions, even just from a practical point of view, have become much more interesting, much more viable to them. So the question was about continuous change. So it's continuous adoption of technology as well. And anybody that's heard me talk over the past, well, if I went back two years, because it's probably the last time I was out in public speaking, but it was really that we were lagging behind some other countries in terms of adoption of technology. I think actually what we've seen in the last two years is that adoption of technology. So we've got customers that would have had a maintenance guy walking around changing the lubrication barrels on machine tools. They've realized he's not there. They've sent him home. Um, they can put a 20 quid IoT sensor on there that measures the levels and he only has to go and do it when he needs to. And if we think back to 18 months ago, you know, it was don't go near anybody, don't, you know, you can't be near each other on the shop floor, you've got to be two metres apart. So actually customers, uh, you know, uh, manufacturers realised that they had to adopt some of these technologies and it's driven that digital transformation really quickly. So I'd say it's continuous adoption as well as continuous improvement. And I think it's been, I think 
it's been tremendous. And I look at how efficient some of our manufacturers have become by necessity, not by choice, unfortunately, but by necessity. And it's, it's had a huge difference in the last 18 months, two years. Yeah. And where have today's innovators placed their bets on, on where to go next? Yeah, well, I think everybody for many years has been talking about AI, machine learning, all of those types of things. And I, I, and I think, again, what Industry 5.0 is about is the combination of those things. So AI can take us so far, but it's still got to learn. You know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, they've got to learn and they've got to learn from people and so on. So I think where are, where are the innovators placing their bets at the moment? It's in that intellectual capital. It's in the people. And, and do you know what's been really interesting? Again, when we were here, was it two years ago? I can't remember. Yeah, it was two years ago, three years ago. Um, you know, Feels talk, like forever ago. It does yeah. feel like forever. <laughs> uh, and, um, but we talked a lot about the uh, skill shortage in manufacturing and engineering. It wasn't a cool place to go. And one of, those, one of the problems with that is people didn't want to be in a, in, on a shop floor in a, you know, five days a week and everything else. Now, you know, for a lot of our manufacturing customers, they're design engineers. They're saying work from home two days a week, three days a week. You know, we can't get really high-end CAD designers in the UK. Work doesn't matter. We'll just hire them from other places. They can work remotely. So that skills gap has closed as well. So I think where are, in, where are we placing our bets at the moment? It's that bringing intellectual capital back in. The Industry 5 piece, the combining of those two things and bring them together, that's where we're betting. I think that's where people should be betting. It used to be really hard for a manufacturer to compete with a tech company in terms of recruiting people. Not so anymore. So I think that's where we're going to see the big innovations over the next... 18 months, two years. And then final question, anybody coming to the Epicor stand over the next couple of days, what can they expect to, to see and find out? Yeah, back to back to the very beginning. So what they're not going to see is a lot of how great Epicor are, because that's not what I wanted to do this year. Yeah, you can have a demo of our product, you can understand how you know, shop floor data capture works, you can understand how MRP works, all those kind of things. But actually what you're going to see, you're going to see products from, yeah, metal foundries, you're going to see product from sheet metal fabricators, you're going to see high-tech uh, fire, fire alarm testers, you're going to see mixing desks from, uh, from, from A6 Adele, one of our customers. That's what you're going to see on our stand, right through to um, some really quite high-tech uh, biocomposites materials injecting uh, uh, into bodies, all sorts of things. So what you're going to see is what are the best of British manufacturers who use Epicor um, doing and what are they, what are they bring into the party. So that's what you're going to see at the Epicor stand over the next, next couple of days. Mark, absolute pleasure to get your thoughts. Thank you for joining us at The Manufacturer. Oh, great. Thank you very much.